You have the blue man of the west player Sauron versus the red dwarven player Mustafa on the other side. Again, classical map, you know, Forts of Isin. Everyone and his mother have seen this map, this map multiple times in every single BFME game. And just like in BFME 1 and BFME 2, also in this game, Rise of the Witch King, it is still the most played and the most popular 1v1 map. A mineshaft coming up for dwarves into the second mineshaft. On the other side, we see farm, farm coming up for man. It's a pretty regular start. Now with the man faction, you have plenty of options. You can go for offensive barracks, forward barracks it's called, to put a bit more pressure. But against dwarves, normally you want to play a bit more defensively. Because they have like a crazy all-out potential. And they can deal way faster damage to your buildings than you can deal to them. Nice, it works now, that's good. So sorry for the technical difficulty. I was putting in the, st in the stream delay, but I think it was kind of messing up everything. Two mineshafts into Hall of Warriors. Uh, five power points, nothing collected, nothing picked yet, but obviously we're gonna see the rallying call choose for both the factions because their secondary choice isn't that great. Pikeman opening for Mustafa. He will be creeping this trolley at the bottom left. That's, you know, that's like obvious. He will be using the pikeman to get inside the mineshaft, get them out from this, and creep this easy peasy. And also pikeman opening for Gondor. Sauron, he's actually building a second barrack. So this one will give the chance to spam a lot of units. And quality uh, might be beaten by the quantity. Like, we have seen this also in the past, in the version 8.5, especially the soldier spam. Like, you see man faction spamming more soldiers than goblin faction goblin warriors. And it's very hard to deal with that. So creeping, he might even go for one more pikeman and creep this one at the same time, but that's not gonna be the case. He's beating the troll, and the troll is not very smart, if I'm being honest with you. Because when he's going back, he kinda is blind for being attacked from behind. And creep easily secured, easily, without taking almost zero damage. In the meantime, the pikemen of Rohan are doing the same. The Rohan spearman, they will get one soldier on the field. There we go. And this soldier is moving on to this side, just to make sure, I mean, this builder is moving to this side, just to make sure that there, there is nothing crazy happening around this area. Okay, beautiful. Creep secured above the players and the first push is going to include one soldier and one pikeman it's like a um, traditional kind of push and the dwarven player will capture this one which gives him the chance to recruit some of the mighty hobbits from the shire what happened the stream just went live we had to close the stream and end the stream again because of the delay but then something happened and my stream randomly closed itself without me doing anything and now we had to restart it for the second time so sorry for the notifications if you got it but it's nothing to do with me it backed out a little bit. Hopefully, you will be, you know, forgiving me. Uh, Krako, first stream I'm catching. I'm so excited. Thank you very much for it, for being here, my friend. Really means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Everyone who's tuning in, watching. I know there are so many lurkers around who are eventually listening while doing something else. Who are not typing always in the Twitch chat. But it's absolutely fine. You guys being around, putting in the effort, watching the stream. Means the ball for me. Thank you. Okay, so fight between pikes and soldiers, it's not a bad, uh, it's not a good fight to take for dwarves because the pikes are getting countered by the soldiers of Gondor and the problem is they are also very expensive, you don't want to lose them like that. And they also got buffed by the way, they used to cost, actually guardians got kind of nerfed. I think they were supposed to cost you only 250, but they increased the price to 300. And the pikemen... Um, they used to cost 350 if I'm not mistaken, and now they cost 300. It's a big push coming in from Sauron. He's actually dealing so much damage to Mustafa. Mustafa is not paying attention to his builder either. He might even lose the builder. Don't do this, Mustafa! In the last possible second. Don't sleep. You want to be active. You want to be awakened. Two minutes. Um, we have one minute and 30 seconds delay. Because I wanted to make sure that the stream is okay. And I didn't want to wait two minutes for the response of you guys. We have 1 minute and 30 seconds delay. Okay. And more spam, more spam, more spam. Just spam units all the time. There is a mineshaft coming up for dwarves. And he has battle wagons. Yeah, he has battle wagons on the field. But there are too many pikemen for the battle wagon to have a chance to approach this. Um, Maybe extrovers could be nice. Maybe. Against the soldiers spam. The oil barrel, hobbits, are burning on their own. Oh, what? He's burning his own hobbits with the fire on the ground, with the battle wagon. It's a bad fight to take for dwarves, but they have no other choice. The battle wagon is going to get in safety. 
he's inside the mineshaft he cannot even get out from this location though because there is a pikeman right in front of the gate in the second you want to get out you will get crushed oh boy the thing smashed it's always good when you bet on the added underdog player because the player you know the people are always be betting on the on the you know the favorite player but then when you bet on the underdog you get also way more points but they now cost only 300 each both of them so guardians and also pikeman they cost 300. Eowyn is gonna be the first hero from Sauron very interesting choice I think she's good against battle wagon stuff because she can keep chasing them down all the time she can smite them from a long distance the smite has not a really long cooldown so you can do it over and over again and I would love to see the damage also from Eowyn against the uh, battle wagons too but for now she's gonna finish off this mineshaft almost level two that's gonna give us give her a, oh never mind he's gonna rebuild it in, just in time now Eowyn will need a lot of time and she won't be committing to that one okay so what is the plan you know what i've not seen for a long time boys from the dwarven faction earlier it was there was a potential of seeing a siege hammer rush so then you don't know with 10 power points with the dwarven faction you have the chance to summon the undermine for an offensive location then you have like three four guardians three guardians with the siege hammers and rallying coal are enough to take down the fortress even with rebuild from your opponent he cannot stop you the amount of damage you deal with the siege hammers to the fortress is kind of insane the battle wagon has been taken down level 4 now the disguise will be available one of the best abilities in the game and i think they actually buffed disguise in this patch so from what i've heard i'm not sure if it's the case but from what i've heard now when you use the uh, disguise your first attack after you use it should actually deal bonus damage i mean man is kind of out spamming dwarves big time he's gonna get also rebuilt to use it on this barracks it's getting to level 3 it's a very cheap upgrade to level 3 it's gonna give you 25 percent faster build speed in addition to that it will also shoot and become way more tanky so 4500 hp will be transferred into 6000 hp that comes to rebuild so it's gonna take you way way longer time to destroy this while it's shooting at you when you're trying to damage it you have been getting level 5 has the shield maiden of rohan for 100 percent more armor so pretty tanky hero the forge works is going down the mineshaft has been taken down the hall of warriors are gonna be the next target and by the time he's dealing with that there are gonna be way more units coming out very very soon from the barracks level three before insane production speed look at two soldiers are being recruited like crazy <laughs> that's that's fast you know some hobbits from the shire coming throwing rocks at the soldiers but they don't stand a chance against the well-trained soldiers of gondor who are screaming for gondor for gondor for gondor Eowyn disengaging it's a hero we definitely see more often lately and this guy makes Eowyn a camel <laughs> I don't know man I don't think so uh, 650 command points for men and 575 command points for dwarves he lost the forge works it means no battle wagons anytime soon but he's able to recruit more of them but the one soldier will be able to the two soldiers gonna be able to capture this before the hobbit can make it out and boom hobbit couldn't enter now man has the chance to recruit some Galadrim warriors Tear it down. throw it down mineshaft is going down yeah Eowyn Eowyn actually causing lots of problems man that's kind of crazy marketplace coming up for man who needs a stable who needs a stable who needs an archery range who needs heroes beside Eowyn and you have two barracks and you can spam soldiers and Rohan spearmen soldiers and Rohan spearmen that's all you need Okay, the war clan is going to be taken down right after. Dion, thank you very much for being here almost all the time today, my friend. It was really nice with you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next stream as well. Have a good rest. Have a good night. The creep secured. Pretty good. And the farm has been taken down. Tear it down. Or okay. I mean, this game is not looking too good for Mustafa, to be honest with you. Like, you know, it would be a lie when I say he can win this. I mean, there is always hope, and the hope in this case will be the disconnect <laughs> when Sauron disconnects, you know. That's gonna be the hope.
I hope next patch includes chicken burger nerf. Chicken burgers. Chicken burgers make, makes fat boys. Don't eat this fast food kind of stuff, you know? Just heal, uh, eat healthy, man. Come on now. Cook yourself something at home. Eat everything you cook your own. It's gonna be healthier in, you know, in compared to this fast food. Uh, they are freezing the chicken for ages in their fridge and then they put it on you with all the sauce and all this ketchup that they put in it just you know tastes good but at the end of the day you don't know if the food is good i don't like it i used to like it back in the day but you know it was kind of hurting my stomach a little bit so i don't eat it. i mean i eat maybe once a year you know but that's pretty much it the build has been used on the hall of warriors the, um, Hobbits are trying to dodge, but they are still getting hit by the arrow volley. Yeah, looks... Looks kinda bad. Stand together, Sol Souls of Gondor. I mean, he's everywhere, right? The double barracks is kinda crazy though. Like, especially this one is so bad for him. The, the production speed is kind of crazy. Yes, even Galadrim War is up on the field. Um, they cost, they actually kind, are kind of expensive though. They cost 400 each and 72 command points. I mean, yeah, they can fight with sword and bow, but still, like 400. Eowyn, what is she doing? What are you celebrating for, Eowyn? What are you excited about? This way. Okay, this way. I will follow you. Alfie, more expensive? Yeah, but, you know, when you, what you are doing in your life, working and this and yet, you know, in order to make money, you are investing a lot of time. And I see it this way, you know, I'm investing so much time to make money, right, to earn money. Then I want to be able to eat what I want. Like, food is the one thing I'm never taking a look into the price, you know. When I, when it's, I want to eat good food, you know what I'm saying. This should be like the minimum, minimum of the human's life to eat healthy to eat good stuff you know like i can get it if you don't want to invest 1500 euro into a phone like iphone 14 pro or something you don't have to do that but when it you know it, I, I always never got it how people invest like tens of thousands of dollars or in euros to cars thousands of euros to phones but when it comes to food they're like nah it's too expensive <laughs> i just don't get it you know aragon is running for his life just eat. You can't eat thousands of euros a month. You know? Aragorn? There are not many pikemen. He has men of deal, but there are not many pikemen upon the field. Um, the dwarven player is still in the game, but he's kind of behind in the power points and command points department. Aragorn is gonna be very strong. That's gonna be a big push though. I mean, you cannot ignore this push. However, I would appreciate the push way more if one of the Hall of Warriors would be level 2 and you would get some of them with the Siege Hammers, you know? Then you have like crazy potential. The build is available for Sauron. It's on cooldown for Mustafa. 610 command points versus 950 command points. There is a huge force re regenerating around the well at the bottom left side. He's getting now the final farm to get to 1000 command points, which is the maximum amount. You can't have more than that. And I believe this army can't match this army, but the hero advantage might come in clutch. Remember, he has like no heroes around. He's waiting for the well, for the regeneration. And uh, Sauron can keep this army here for the worst case scenario. He doesn't have to push because Mustafa is the one who needs to make a move. Sauron can now move from the bottom side and eventually dominate because there is not much from Mustafa around this area. He has all his army around this area and now comes the commitment. The statue will be taken down before the fight even gets started. Aragorn is very close to the level 2. Rallying Call is going to be used for offensive purpose. The full commitment. The units are coming now from the mineshaft, the men of the Look, he's forcing him to make a choice because he's going to push from both the sides, making a perfect use of the army advantage he has. Forcing him to either defend this area or defend this area. Because Mustafa can't defend both of them at the same time. He has not that much units on that many units on the field. Elvin being healed, getting in safety. Bob arrow shot or black arrows can actually chunk even heroes like Elvin. But remember, Elvin can just use this, uh, the shield medium to get a lot of armor. Aragorn is level two now, level almost three. Is the blade master? There comes the Tom Bombadil summon into the Sonic Song. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. 
He just wiped the hobbits away. But didn't kill and touch the Man of Deal. But it's okay though. Tawa, Aragorn is melting it. The one thing that bothers me about Aragorn is the attack speed. He's attacking so slowly. You know what I mean? Like, his attacks hurt, but he attacks so incredibly slowly. So sloppy. The big commitment on the Hall of Warriors, it's gonna be definitely taken down. Um, but you shouldn't shoot at it. You know, it's like waste of time. When you have arrows, oh, he's gonna rebuild it. Men of Teal are slaughtering the souls of Gondor, but it's okay. He won't be able to achieve too much from this location. But he was able to melt this area. But hold on a second. He wanna go for level 3. He wanna go for the Zealots. Dwarven Zealots might actually do the trick. Because they are so strong. Actually, they are so strong. And the one thing Man Faction doesn't have right now are archers. He doesn't even have an archer range up on the field. But he's gonna go for the Knights of Dolam Roth. So we will have Elite versus Elite. If I'm not mistaken, these units are supposed to counter cavalry. I don't know if that's if these were the units which are countering cavalry or if it's where the Uruk Deathbringers. But one of these two infantry units were actually kind of good against cavalry. But I'm not certain though. We will find out. We will find out. <laughs> but if I stop subbing, how can he buy Salah? <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 of course man the four euro in a month is gonna make the differential <laughs> that's the difference between eating healthy and between eating non-healthy stuff the four euro in a month <laughs> all right the statue is gonna be taken down uh, the dwarves are actually kind of pushing back there comes the arrow uh, volley he's not even trying to dodge he loses all his army once again I'm actually curious about the performance of these units. Look, they slow. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, I think they slaughtered these units. These extra wars. They are very, very strong. But can they fight against Aragorn, for example? That's the big question. They're also surprisingly fast, by the way, in compared to normal dwarven units. And they hit like a truck. You know, Mustafa's big hope, that is Colum. Mustafa's big hope is to go for the for the siege hammers and just go for the fortress, man. He can do it. He can. And tr trust me, he can do it. Oh, they are hitting very hard. Where is Aragorn and Elvin? Look, finally, Elvin got his Aragorn, got her Aragorn. Finally, finally. That's all she wanted. The trilogy. That's all she wanted. Okay. 15 power points almost after the arrow volley. And we have 12 power points for dwarves. He has the dwarven riches, but he doesn't even use it yet. You gotta use it though, on this one eventually. But he's losing map control everywhere. He's going for a push. He has one Zealot with one Man of Deal and one Pikeman. And he needs... This guy can't even come out because his command points kept. Not anymore though because Knights are taking care of the Man of Deal. Giving more command points to Mustafa. Is he gonna... Oh my! What? He used Cloudbreak to stun them? He has Soldier Army with Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. Hold on a second. The Zealots can't even make it out. Dwarven... He's using the Blade of... Uh, Blade Master, look at this. That siege armor right there. That siege armor right there. Forge blades and heavy armor. How many times do we get the chance to see that? Quality beats quantity. In the fortress, it's gonna fall. Does he have rebuild? It's on cooldown. He cannot. He don't use it, and he's gonna call it. It's gonna be the first game. What a push with the Aragorn leadership. You know, rallying call for the double buff. In the forge blades, heavy armor on the soldiers. We have the blue dwarven player Sauron against the red. Goblin player Mustafa in the game number two on the map as hold. I mean, this is a good map for the Goblin faction because, you know, obviously, again, when it comes to play Goblins, you need a lot of macro. And when there is a faction uh, Mustafa likes the most, it is, it is the Elven faction. And unfortunately for him, he never got the chance to play it so far. He has to get the Elven faction and he's very good with it, you know? Isn't this the semi-final? Sauron versus Smog next. That's quarterfinals. In the next game, Sauron versus or Sauron or Mustafa fighting against Smokey, that's gonna be the semi-finals. Um Goblin Keef into the second Goblin Keef. Requires a lot of macro. You need to hide multiple tunnels all around the map. Uh, 
uh, can you play some patch 2.01 or watch the video replays has i posted on game replays or art video section and uh, no i mean why would i do that though <laughs> i mean i believe like 99.9 percent of the people are playing it on 2.02 .02. and nobody's playing it on 2.01 i don't see a reason why i should be doing this it's just too confusing to my in my opinion because i believe by now there are there have to be like thousands of changes you know what i mean like there are seven factions that's the version 8.9.0 uh, and it's not like it's not going like one two three four it's going like one one point one one point two like i believe uh, the 2.0 team released eventually like over a hundred versions by now i believe the game got completely overchanged in compared to 2.01 and i don't see a reason for me to do that you know okay so the first tunnel coming up around this side two tunnels uh, two goblin keys three goblin warriors inside the tunnel you will see was westworld good for goblins or was it still kind of too small no it's not too small i mean westworld is like an ideal map everything else is a bit too big you know jungles of fararad is just a little bit too big big pushes incoming are the dwarves prepared for that? He has like no units inside the mineshaft though. He's building up the for oh he went for the fourth forex opening. And the battle wagon is gonna be the opening from dwarves. I didn't even see that. But the mineshaft is gonna be taken down. The problem is oh he's gonna go for rebuild. It's not gonna do much. It's gonna be still destroyed. And this you 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 want you don't wanna trample into them too much because they can use the poison blades. In five yards, the pikemen and the porcupine formation very smart move from Sauron to make sure that they are tanky enough while the battle wagon is taking care of the goblins by trampling them over and over again. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not the hard, it's not the worst case scenario for the goblin player Mustafa because he traded Warchant into the rallying call and he was still able to kill a uh, mineshaft, including pikemen, which is much more valuable in compared to the goblin warriors he just lost. It's a good treat, and during all this time, he's also untouched. So in the meantime, Sauron making a transition into the Archer range and also Hall of Warriors. The Battle Wagon gives you the chance to go for a big commitment. What you can do with it is you can just, you know, get a banner upgrade on it for leadership part. Then you get like three, four Guardians and one, two Pikemen and you just go. And it's very hard to contest it for the Goblin. It's very hard to fight against that. Look, he can trample again. You see, they are dealing no damage unless you overcommit your trample. But then you go for a small trampers like that. Look, you see. They just get out. They need ages to destroy one of the battle wagons. And even half lost swordmen, they don't stand a chance. This one is no upgrades yet, but it's gonna be level two very, very soon. The goblins are forced to disengage, and that means the destruction of this tunnel. Extroverse guardians. He has to demolish it to get a bit money back. The more, the earlier you demolish it. The better it is because you get more money, you know? Can you please make food stream one day? I mean, you know, I'm lucky. I'm a, I'm a lucky person. My wife is cooking for me. You know what I mean? My life, my, I'm just like, I'm good at eating. You know what I mean? I'm just good eater, but not a good cooker. I mean, I'm being honest. I'm a very lucky person because throughout my entire life, I've never, I had never to take care of anything in my, ho in my home when it comes to cooking or washing or this and that, you know? Until I was married, my mom did it. <laughs> and since I'm married, my wife is doing it. I'm a happy person, you know what I mean? Very lucky person. But I, but I can cook. I mean, I could cook. I'm a, I'm a person, I think everybody should be able to do everything in the world. Even if you don't need it. Because there might be a time in which you might need it, then you are kind of screwed. So for that reason, I was taking a cooking, cooking uh, school. Like a like couple of lessons about cooking in Germany a few years ago. I mean, like, 10 years ago. So I have, like, some basic knowledge about cooking. So I, I wouldn't starve to death, you know what I mean? I could still survive, <laughs> you know, when my wife would leave me, which hopefully she won't. I would like to know everything, even though I don't have to do that, you know, my, you know what I mean? Four power points in the bank, almost four goblins, and dwarves have five power points after rallying call. Yeah, after the, the rebuild, sorry, not rallying call. You see the power? That's what I'm talking about. Like, goblin extra, uh, dwarven extrovers are very strong against goblin spam. And then you have the guardians in front line to protect them against the goblin spam. And we buff them with the leadership of the battle wagon banner. So, long story short, it's a deadly combination which works out pretty much all the time.
Why not a hot tub stream eating chicken burgers? <laughs> Dude, I don't like when people are making fun out of my chicken breast. <laughs> I don't like it. And to be honest, look, I love women. I have a daughter and I have a wife. But realistically speaking, it's so much easier for women to do that kind of stuff. Men can't do that stuff. You know what I mean? Men can't do that stuff. Like... When you are a good-looking woman, you are born and you are looking hot. If you are a girl who is looking hot. Let's be real. You start the world when 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 we when we think about the the life as a football game, you literally start with like five zero ahead. You know, you have like five zero advantage already in the ninety minute games. But when you are a boy and you are ugly, you start five zero behind. You know what I mean? Big push. Which part of, of Germany are you at? I'm in the south side of Germany. I'm pretty close to Austria, you know, and to Munich also. Like, I'm two hours away from Munich, two hours away from Stuttgart, and like one hour away from like Bregenz or something, you know, like Austria. I'm living in a, in a place in which I can be in very fast time in Austria and in Switzerland. Big fight. Keith Pets is gonna actually favor you now, big time. The battle wagons are taking care of these goblins, and then all you gotta do is kill the Aflos Wartman. And I think they should be doable. No oil barrel, though. Actually, half trolls are kind of smashing. You know, remember they are kind of immune to damage. Oh, beautiful trampling coming from the spider riders. Trample, trample with the charge attack, charge attack. Just keep up the pressure. The battle wagons? They are so tanky, though. Okay. And he's not gonna say a word. And that's gonna be the game number two. Just like that, boys. Elves versus Mordor. El Clasico matchup for the game number three. The last chance for the Mordor player Mustafa to turn this around. I mean, Mordor can definitely win against Elves. It's definitely possible. Especially on a map like this. You need to kind of make sure to get into the mid-game power spike very, very soon. We have seen... You know, the performance of the Mordor faction a lot in the today, you know, with the Black Riders when Shadow Fax was playing against uh, Mustafa, and uh, not Mustafa, against King, uh, Ave Havi. In the Mordor against Man matchup, you see how much pressure you can create, how much money you can generate with your, uh, you know, industry. We have like Corsairs, we have Orcs, we have Easterlings, Black Riders, two Fell Beasts, in, and one Witch King. All three of them can fly. Mouth of Sauron, a great hero for the anti-cavalry hero so you have like lots of options you know bro you talk like a capitalist no i'm not actually you know <laughs> like for me I, I personally don't care that much about money i mean for me i always think about this way as long as i have money to have like a you know like to have like an apartment to live in so i don't need to stay in cold or in hot you know and I can fill my stomach with food and care about my about my family. And I make one time one time in a year vacation. It's good for me, you know, it's enough. Because we also need to remember we always get only born one time. They have only one life. And you cannot get your time back. You can always earn money when you're a bit older, when your life is a little bit changing, but you cannot gain the time back you are investing into stuff. So time is the most valuable resource, in my opinion. Because you're only the one time 30 years old. You're only the one time 31 years old. One time, like me, 32 years old. And then all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, you see you are like 60 years old. You have like all the... I mean, when you are healthy, you're lucky, but you're obviously not as young anymore. And you have not that much endurance and energy. And you're like, holy moly, I should have done more when I was younger. And I know many, many people who have, you know, who are regretting their lifestyle, who are now 60 plus, And they're like, oh my goodness, I wish I would have gone to this place. I would have done this with my family. I would have done this. But all I was caring about is money, money, money. I was working in three shifts, 17 hours a day. But then at the end of the day, I have now five houses, but I have zero good memories, you know. So that is, that's why it's important to have like a work-life balance, in my opinion. Like the wind. 
<laughs> okay, so beautiful trample. Very good, actually, from Mustafa into the Warchant. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Uh, Elven player is playing it way too passive. Mordor was able to capture literally the full map. Sauron is kind of in a really bad spot. He has zero pikemen until now. And besides, I mean, he will get more pikemen from this Parax very, very soon. But he might actually lose a lot, you know? I mean, I don't know, Gallop, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's the case for everybody or it should be the case for everybody. I don't want you guys to misunderstand me, you know what I mean? I'm just telling you my opinion. Life is too short. Those lies has spent three days watching Beyond Standards. Oh my goodness, man. It's like, what, 72 hours? Is it true that women age like a milk and men age like a vine? Depends, depends. But in, rea in reality, I believe women die way later than men. I have seen a lot of women who have lost their uh, husbands than I have seen husbands who have lost their wives. And I'm always telling to my wife, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm always saying, hey, I'm going to die way before you, you know? <laughs> it, it's like, it's like that. And there was a show, it was so funny, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you guys seen this in YouTube. I was crying, I had like tears in my eyes. The, like, the woman, like a feminist woman, was arguing with a, with a guy. And the guy is like logically, you know, expressing his opinion based on facts. But the woman was always insulted about his statements. And he's like, she was like screaming at him. And why women are always living longer than men, you know? And the man responded, yeah, because the husbands did, when they have wives like you screaming at them, they just don't want to live anymore. <laughs> you need to search for this. It was so funny. I was crying, you know? The Malone tree is going to be saved. For the glory of Linden. When I'm old, I want to watch Mahamara. <laughs> But she will also be old then. <laughs> okay, Black Orc army, dude. Once you go black, you never go back. Easterlings are marching forward. Let's see how much damage this will achieve. Because the thing is, Mordor is in a very good spot. Even though, when you take a look into the command points, you can see 650 command points versus 400. And you can see that Mustafa, even though he's the one who's pressuring, he's not expanding as much as he should. Look, there is there are zero slaughterhouses around this area for no reason you should be expanding a lot a lot build 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 i have seen in the past in the past weeks also that spamming resource buildings in this game is actually very effective because when you are always living with the minimum like you have 400 slot 400 command points and you have like this much amount this amount of money income then when something goes wrong when you lose a couple of them you are kind of doomed that's why when you have money just 300 build 300 build you know like spamming, res I'm telling you guys, spamming resource building in this game is actually pretty efficient. Lindens are on the field, and they are forced to disengage from the Easterlings though. They get more Lindens now. They are trying to shoot the Easterlings, but they don't deal too much damage to them. They will need Aegis. He's creeping offensively, almost 7 power points in the bank. 700 command points and 2000 plus resources. And that's the thing. Spam resource buildings and get rich. The start was phenomenal for Mustafa. He could have not asked for uh, any better start. But yet, the follow-up was kind of poorly. I mean, first of all, I don't classify things like... For me, a human is a human, you know? For me, I don't care about the, the race or the gender. Who cares about that? Again, every man has a mother. So, you know, you have a mother. I love my mother over everything. I would die for my mom. Every day of the week, you know what I mean? I would give everything what I have for my mom. She's a woman. She's the best woman I have met in my life, though. But again, I have a daughter who's also a girl. So I don't care about this gender thing. I was happy when my daughter was born. I was happy when my son was born. But I think there is just too much sensibility going on. You know what I mean? In the world. A little bit too much. Like, that you are scared to say anything to a person, to a person's personality, and they would take it as a, as an insult to their gender. Which is complete BS. No, that's not the case. When I'm saying you are dumb, I'm not saying it because you are a woman or you are a man. I'm just saying because you, you as a person, you are dumb, you know? But nowadays, we also have to be careful about every single word coming out of our mouth. And that's kind of stressful, in my opinion. That's unneeded, yo. I mean, unneeded, you know?
okay. I mean, Alvin player is kind of defending, but Mordor is expanding finally. Even though he could do a bit more. 625 command points versus 600. This might be the one game in which Mordor can win. And Mustafa can bring us to the game number four. We have Glorfindel on the field as the first hero from Elves. And Mordor has zero heroes so far. And he's going to build more and more Malone trees into the Forge Fork. So he want to get the Silverton arrows. We have seen the strategy a couple of times already. And, you know, getting Lindens and giving them the Silverton arrows was a pretty, pretty strong strategy. Which kind of count can count to the Mordor units, all of them. Including a Felbis or even the Witch King, you know. The Lindens with Silverton arrows would get the chance to hit like a truck. We can also hit the flying heroes. No problemo. The Black Orcs, they don't stand a chance. The Easterlings, which are the only counter to cavalry effective counter, would also get smashed. But again, we have seen how impo impactful a hero like Mouth of Sauron can be in those kind of situations, you know? Okay, so the map, in the, in the middle of the map, it looks pretty nice for Mordor. Look, he has this buff under his control. He has a great amount of vision control. Can expand a little bit more aggressively. He can afford it. But at some point of the game, he needs to find a perfect transition into something stronger. In this case, we are talking about something like Black Rider, for example, right? Black Rider can be stronger. Haradrim Archer, maybe, even though the map is a little bit too big for them. I think Black Rider would be a much better choice for harassment, for tankiness, for po more power powerful units. Shilop has been buffed, Chengs. Nice, man. I'm happy to hear that. Okay, Blade of Purity is popping off. I mean, he's full HP again, level 4. And how do you want to deal with that? He, wanna, he went for the level 3 for the Haradrim archers. He has industry on this level 3 slaughterhouse, he has catapults on top of them uh, around the uh, fortress as expansions. And 875 command points versus 650. He's still leading the command points department. But you want to make sure to protect this one. That's going to be the most important building with this one together, level 3 Radrim Palace. And what you can do and what you should be doing in my opinion is to buy a banner. Again, banner very valuable not only on these units but also on Black Orcs. Because with this... Level 2, you get the barbed arrow shot, and with this level 2, you unlock the bloodthirsty. Okay. Hold your fire! Hold your fire. Oh, a lot of Lindens, though. I mean, I, I'm actually curious about what's gonna happen once he has the Silverton arrows on all of them. The Mortar Builder. Kill him. Ah. Just trample. I don't know why he's not trampling. Yeah, just trample. It's way, way faster this way. You can kill them way quicker. Yeah, beautiful, very well done. Okay, so Lindens with Silverton Arrows. I'm curious. I'm very curious. Fire! Doesn't even have them yet, the Silverton Arrows. There, there comes, I think he wanted to upgrade the Fortress for cheap upgrades. Now 166 each, which is pretty, pretty cost efficient. And that's one of the best upgrades in the game. Look at them now. Oh my goodness, when they get the chance to shoot. It looks so nice and disturbing at the same time, you know? Who disappointed you, my friend? <laughs> I mean, no. Big push. Alright, so the question is... Can those Haradrim archers? Uh oh, trampling! Okay, never mind. Just in time, get in position to avoid the trample. Two Haradrim archers without fire, without barbed arrow shot. Against a massive amount of Lindens. And again, Mustafa, what are you doing, Mustafa? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look from behind, sandwiching him. I mean, he got lucky that he didn't lose them, but they are basically dead. And again, Mustafa does it again. He does not pay attention. He's getting out microed big time from his opponent. Painted land. 
There comes the Cloud Break. Yes, Cloud Break already. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is gonna hurt, man. This is gonna hurt. Uh, David, thanks for the follow. Sai Shroom, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. It really means a lot. You see the. See what's on Eros, boys? You see this? It's, that's devastation. That's devastation in my book. Stun them all, rule them all, win them all. All the army got crashed. Mouth of Sauron finally on the field, but it might be a little oh bit too late. Because there is going to be a Glorfindel who can fight you back. You know, he can, he can fight you back. Come on. Come on. The only thing is they, have lack, uh, they are lacking of damage against buildings. You know, they cannot really deal economical damage. So at some point of the game, the Elven player Sauron will need ends. He need to build, he need to build the end mood. Should I go to sleep? I work at 7 tomorrow, but I want to watch. What should I do? I mean, when you are tired, go to sleep, my friends. Your work is more important. And again, you can just watch the bot tomorrow when you are, uh, you know, home after work. It's not, that's also possible. But if you are saying, nah, I'm not tired, you know, you can put on your headphones, you know, take your phone into your bed and watch until you fall asleep. Okay, so e25 command points for Mordor. Um, what is the proper response to that, though? I mean, he has now Elven armor on them, right? He has the Silverton arrows on them. Build has been literally one-shotted. I'm curious about what is the proper response to that, because whatever you bring to the table, there are just too many of them, and they can burst down everything. I don't even know if Black Riders could be a counter to that one. I don't even know if Mouth of Sauron can counter that, because with this, with the Elven armor, they don't die anymore to one shot. They can be buffed from, you know, with the Rallying Call. And they can just split up a little bit and shoot you. Look, this is supposed to be a counter, for example, right? And they can literally one-shot the full Easterling Battalion. You see that? I will not change anything about that. I want to see the mouth of Sauron. I think you can kill him. Yeah, you can kill him. Look, look, that's what I'm talking about. What is the proper counterplay to that? He is supposed to be a counter to that, right? And not even he can counter this. They can just sit here I will represent and kill the men of literally Gondor. everything. Dugan return, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. And now just bail until the tomato is getting not red anymore. Govmog, and then just, you know, once the fury is off. And that's the, you know, the most impressive part is the the, the kite potential. Because you can always disengage whenever you want to. And now you can just turn on him. Yeah, and you can kill him. What is this damage, man? Look at this. And, you know, show him the clip, show him this clip, boys. Whoever sees... Alvin faction is weak. Show him that. Where are you from, Meldon? I'm from Germany. Oli. I was born and raised in Turkey. I'm a Turkish guy living in Germany. And doing uh, English streams, you know. If that's not multi -culty, I don't know what is. Glorfindel is running for his life. It's a huge army. 825 command points versus 1000. Elves were able to get back into the game. And he has like 15 power points in the bank. So, he might go for the Eagles after the mist, or he can just skip that and go for the 25 instead. Tavern level 3 for the heavy armor eventually. Now, I'm just, I'm just curious, guys. I'm asking you guys in the chat, what is the answer to this army? You know? <laughs> How can you deal with this army? That's what I want to know. I think you can't. Whatever you bring to the table, you can't. They can dodge the catapult shots, they are very mobile, they can dodge them. They can dodge the shot and turn on the catapult, kill it with the silverton, arrow, silverton arrows, they can do that pretty quickly. They can even kill heroes in a few seconds. They can trample everything what they shouldn't fight against, like Haradrim Arches, for example. And that kind of forces the Mordor player into a sandry situation. When I think about it, what could be nice against this army of this of the Lindens could be eventually a Gorgorov fire, Spire Fireball. Like, go on the Gorgorov Spire Fireball on the fortress and beat them into a, into a location, into fighting, and then you fireball them all. Like, imagine a fireball right on the spot here, and you can wipe out every single one of them. Alaikum salam. You can leave the game, it's a nice counterplay. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, but you have seen Mouth of Sauron getting one-shotted. Mouth of Sauron couldn't even get the chance to hit them one single time, you know? And you need to be level 4, but the question is how you want to get level 4. And you get killed every time before you want to make a move. Full command points, full population. Arvin, level 4. Level 7, Glorfindel. Has now the Wind Rider, which also gives him the chance to write down something like Mouth of Sauron, write them down literally and kill them. Level 10 unlocks the Starlight. And big fight here. Look at this. Look, they are just sitting and face tanking this. Face tanking this. Level 3, Mouth of Sauron. Look, once they are done with the pikemen, don't trample into them though. Once they are done with the pikemen, they can just turn on him and wipe him out. Look, they are, they are taking care of him. Just kill the pikemen first though. There comes the rallying call. Level 4, doubt all you want. He doubted them. Actually, on foot, he's tankier. On foot is tanky, way tanky though. Actually, he. Never mind, man. Okay, I take it back. He actually wiped them out. What the heck? <laughs> nice. Nice. Gothmok is also back in the business. He has 23 power points though. The heroes are taking care of everything. Don't run into the pikemen, Arvin. Use Atelas at least. Atelas! Atelas! Press it, Sauron. Come on now. Okay. And uh, Mouth of Sauron was able to get away too. That's good. Level 5 has the doubt. It's on cooldown. Um, no int mood, no siege potential until now. Okay, never mind. He went for the int mood. He's gonna recruit the daddy of the end. And with the 25, he has the chance to fully commit. So he can go for the flood, you know, use it on the fortress to kill all the expansions, and then you just siege. Maybe three bit all alone is not gonna be enough. But keep in mind that he has also a Glorfindel. So Glorfindel can also get inside the genes with the bleed of purity and deal massive amount of damage. Yeah, ma map control is very, very rough at this point. Ghost army? Yeah. But as Mordor, you have no ghost army, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Galeti, yeah, 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 we will, we will, we will, my friend. I got you, Gale. Sauron playing with his food, he could have won this game <laughs> done easily now. Doubt OP? Yeah, Doubt is pretty powerful, man. He needs more ends though. Oh, does he sell them or what is he doing? Oh, he wanted to sell them, I think, but he didn't. Look how many of them though. He has like full population of the Lindens almost. Eagle, the giant eagle from the fortress is also on the field. He cannot recruit any more units, so he has to eventually sell a couple of them if he wants to be able to recruit more ends. They cost 60 command, point, command points each. So if he wants more ends, he needs to make some space in the command points. Mordor, I'm telling you, like Gorgoroth's Fire Fireball would be the best choice. What are your thoughts on the Rings of Power show? I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest with you. For me, I mean, like, I'm being obvious, uh, I'm being, you know, like, not pessimistic and not even talking about the uh, um, things about the Lord of the Rings, but also just like, just like, you know, neutrally talking about the show itself. It's developing extremely slow, super boring to keep watching. I've been watching uh, that and falling asleep multiple times in multiple different episodes. The acting of the actors is kind of questionable. None of them is famous. Yet this is to, supposed to be the most expensive series of all time. All time, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the show itself developing super slowly. Galadriel character feels very odd. She feels like an assassin. Like a big sword fighter. But in reality she was not meant to be like that person. She looks always angry. I mean, she has always the same face impression. I don't know. I don't know if she's always angry, but she always looks angry, you know, because she cannot act. I don't hate her or something. I don't even know who this person is. But uh, as a main character, you could hire somebody more professional, I believe, more famous, if you are investing that much money into that. And yeah, these are my opinions. The animations and the graphics are looking amazing, but that's not about it, you know. I would rather have a little bit less beautiful animations and graphics but a better topic to cover than other way around big push um but he has now the 28 power point 25 power point so he can actually use even flat on this army and wipe it out he got the ring yeah he's gonna go for galadriel look his money yes he yes he but i believe she also costs command points no i think she costs command points so you cannot even recruit her because you are command points kept. <laughs> oh 
don't spoil it but i'm just like being like constructive you know i'm just saying my opinion i was disappointed i was having more expectations but it is over this cloud break stun yeah that's rough it looks like it's Kofmok is still on level 5, you know? Doubt them, maybe? Doubt? Hey man, wake up. Come on now. Wake up. Doubt! It's your chance to doubt them, dude! Oh my goodness. Look, the power points are rising to the sky. Uh oh, Glorfin, no! Heal in the last possible second. In the last possible second. Can you show Mordor spells? Sure. Mordor is still far away from getting to the. 15 not even i mean not we are not talking about 25 he's not even close to be 15 power points yet he went for double 10 body kit in the industry um and he still needs 15 which eventually can be a worm even though worm wouldn't be even a good choice at this point maybe darkness could be a better choice because you need some something to counter the cloud break so when he use cloud break you can use darkness you know I think heroes, they don't cost command points, really? Yeah, but you know, that's, that's the thing. CGI. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, how is this the most expensive series of all time? It's like a big statement. When you make the statement, then you kind of increase the expectations. I mean, there are multiple different reasons why the expectations are pretty high, right? First of all, it's based on the best trilogy of all time, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's a Lord of the Rings, it's Tolkien. So, there are huge fans. They will, of course, you know, compare what happens in the show with what happens in the books. And there, there are a lot of expectations, a lot of criticism pot potential. And then, you also make a statement like, that's gonna be the most expensive theory of all time. That's a big statement. Then, you bring your show extremely sloppy. It develops very poorly. The actors are meh at best, you know? And I don't know. I'm still watching it though. <laughs> I'm still watching it because I have nothing else to do. Not because I'm hyped for it. Not I mean normally when I for example when I was watching the boys, the Siri Boys in Amazon Prime, I was always waiting for the day they bring up a new episode, you know. I was always hyped about it. I was like, yeah, tomorrow there is gonna be a new episode of Boys. And with the rings of power, I was like, ah, today they have a new episode whatever you know i cannot watch today let me watch tomorrow or whenever i have nothing else to do i mean mordor is kind of doomed though and what is the plan of sauron at last the ring's power is revealed yeah look in this in this game she doesn't even have swords but in the in the series in the rings of power series this cheat what this cheat <laughs> mustafa <laughs> i like mustafa's english conversations this cheat maybe trust i mean she doesn't in the guys am, am i right am i right or not guys please let me know your opinion in this show she feels like an assassin dude super angry looking person who is like a very skilled sword fighter is fighting better with sword than aragorn did i mean what is this something to do with the galadriel's character development in the in the trilogy and also in the hobbit films she was like um elvin queen mage sorcerer kind of thing but not a swordman assassin kind of thing okay gorgorov spire fireball Actually, Treebeard is kind of tanky boy. I think he should have died for this one. Against this one. Or not. Like, the amount of money you need to invest to do that. Against the Ent. Whose weakness, the biggest weakness are, is fire. And he's able to survive that. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Glorfindel is taking a lot of damage. He's going to be forced to heal. And, yeah, in the meantime. Galadriel. The queen. Terrible fury. <laughs> Kick them, kick them. Okay. Do it. Boom. I mean, the tornado is also doing a great job. He used the flat, by the way, on the fortress. That's why it's damaged, if you're wondering. 
The Gorgor of Spire Fireball didn't achieve too much. And the tree beard keeps shooting. Shooting, shooting. But again, you will... Oh, never mind. He will have now more ends. Come, my friends. The ends are going to Come, fall. Come, my friends. The ends are going to fall. It is likely... I mean, that's one way of killing them, the barrage on your face. You can see, right? You can see, guys. The one thing elves are really bad against is when somebody is camping. Because your ends are very vulnerable against fire. So, especially against factions like Men of the West or Mordor or even Dwarves. When they are camping with catapults and trebuchet, it's super hard to do anything about that. The ends get killed in a few seconds. And what you can also do, you can get fire munitions, for example, on the fortress. And every single one of your towers and your buildings are gonna shoot with fire arrows, which again is a great counterplay to ends. And the end got killed, the fortress is still around with 35% HP, which is still quite tanky. Remember, it has like the armor around it, so it's pretty, pretty strong. And everything is gonna shoot you down. There is a Witch King on the field. And Witch King is also a pretty strong hero, 1000 command points. Where is Galadriel though? Did he lose Galadriel? Am I blind? Um, what? Arvin is here. Eagle is here. Some units around this area. Maybe I'm wrong. From Tolkien Nods, there is a version of Galadriel's warrior that he wrote that but it was in the first age before the teaching of Melian. So warrior Galadriel is understandable, but I agree with the rest of you, see? Yeah, but again, you know, I mean, that is Galadriel. I don't know, man. I don't think, like, when you, from my own perspective, you know, I have, like, different opinion about Galadriel, whatever. Like, it's not like they are making everything, like, in the books. They are making up a lot of stuff which have not ha which have not nothing to do with the books. And it's kind of disturbing for me to have... I don't know, man. It looks strange. Okay. Doubt them all, doubt them all, doubt them all, doubt, doubt, doubt. There is the Witch King yet. There is the Witch King. Witch King has to be dismounted. Ooh, nice shots, nice shots, nice shots. Uh, Fury from Gothmog. He has also the Iron Hand for the for the Fury Resistant. He went for the Arrow Wally. But again, you have nothing to stop them from moving. Arrow Wally might be a horrible choice against Horse Arches because there is a low chance that you can land it. Oh. Okay, yeah, you see? It's hard. It's hard to land it on. Maybe you should, uh, you should have aimed for the ants, though. Witch King. Oh, oh. Witch King against Galadriel. Who wanna see that? I'm curious about the damage of the evil eye against Galadriel. I would like to see about how much damage it would deal, but unfortunately, Mouth of Sorn is only level 6. It pecks us. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean the actor. I don't like. I don't know the actor as. I don't like the actor as well from Galadriel. Like maybe, maybe, maybe it's not even her fault. Maybe the director is saying always look, look angry, look angry, look angry. But she seems to be angry nonstop. She has like the one face impression which basically never changes, and it's disturbing for me to watch that over and over again. Like, you know. And she's the main character. She's been shown the most in the show. One more hit. Three bit camp. Three bit two deaths. Three bit. No. One more hit was needed. One more hit. We have also Tranduil on the field. Why Galadriel? Galadriel can actually do that too. Tranduil is shooting from downtown, but deals zero damage, of course, <laughs> to the fortress, to the units, to the catapults. And flat is also not available. And uh, this dude is level six. Witch King is only level 1, has to be level 2 for the debuff. Um, the map is looking amazing for uh, for elves. But also the Mordor player has a lot of money. He has 5,000 in the bank. There comes the Whirlwind, and Whirlwind from Galadriel is going to be able to finish it off. She's going to run away for her life. Uh, you cannot kill her, she's too tanky. She's like 7,500 HP, but also about the armor set she has. She's like basically taking no damage from any source. You need like a full army to kill her, you know? Assassin, kick them. 
I mean, he's gonna rebuild the fortress, by the way. You know, Mustafa, he doesn't want to give up, boys. He want to fight until the very end. Black Riders, yeah, Black Riders, even for Black Riders, it's a little bit too late now. I think what you need to do is get Haradrim Archers with like Drummer Troll or something. You give them leadership with the double buff, war chance, and then you debuff the enemy units or something. I don't know, like maybe even Darkness could be nice. But at this point of the game, the only thing that can save Mordor really is going to be the Reign of Fire. So what you need to do is get to the power, power point spike of the 25 and use the Reign of Fire to wipe out the army. And then you eventually kill Galadriel, get the own, get the ring for yourself, and then use the ring <laughs> to get Sauron. Maybe that's the only way. It's gonna be available for the second time. The fortress is up now again. That means the Mordor player is legit able to use the power points. The question is, does Mordor know that? And yeah, he knows that now. He was able to see the fortress. And look at the money from uh, from the Elven player too. He's rich, but all he needs to do is get more ends, more ends, more ends. You know, like he has now two end moods finally upon the field. Get three beard. I mean, sell some of your units if you have to. Just invest every resource you have into more and more and more and more ends which king against galadriel galadriel you better run look the catapults you see the the camp situation i'm telling you guys the camp situation is so difficult when you camp it out it's mordor it's tough you know it's tough next year we will continue tomorrow i don't know i will have to ask sauron after this game if he's willing to play if he has time to play because smoke is around and when Smokey and Sauron both say, yes, we can do it, I'm down too, you know what I mean? I, I can't do that. Um, not a problem for me to sacrifice one or two hours more of my sleep. They are worth it. <laughs> yes, upgrades immediately on the fortress to get a bit more tankiness, so it can tank more damage. I think um, the only win condition for Mustafa is to kill Galadriel, get the ring, and get afterwards Sauron. Cloud break has been used. And for this dude, I want to see the level 7 from this dude. Level 7 from this dude, Evil Eye against Galadriel. Industry has been used on this level 3, but there is a push coming from the other side. Full camp situation. And 3 bit is here. More ends are coming. I mean, yeah, yeah you should just go one by one, you know. You, you don't need to kind of force down the fortress all the time. You can just kill the buildings one by one, one by one, and then make sure that nothing is around anymore and you kill his fortress and you get the w <laughs> oh beautiful shot again he killed the catapulta now now maybe that's gonna be the time for you to commit but here's the gorgoroth's fire fireball yeah here's the gorgoroth he can use it on the ends here by the way if he wants to but he, maybe he needs to maybe he needs to but he's gonna use it. Yeah, he's gonna use it on the two ends. Are they gonna get one-shotted? Yeah, they get one-shotted. But there are two more ends. But you see, here's the fire munitions. And that's what I'm talking about. Now the level 3 buildings are also able to burn them. That's why ends are so bad against fire, you know? They are burning. He's gonna die to the burn effect now, right? Yeah, he's dead. 3-bit is also very low. 
And for that reason, you need to make sure that you attack the buildings first. Kill the level 3 Haradrim Palace, for example. Then kill the level 3 Tavern. Kill this level 3. Kill this level 3, you know. Fireball is on cooldown. The heroes are recovering, but they cannot really approach. Three Mordor heroes, they have like a cancel. You know, they're like, what are we supposed to do, Witch King? I don't know. No man can kill me, but Galadriel is a woman. And she can kill me. Okay. Oh, oh. That's... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, the Sun Flare is coming in clutch. Did it one-shot Govmok or something? Nah, Govmok is alive. I was expecting Sun Flare to deal, to deal way more damage to Govmok and to other heroes. But it dealt almost no damage. If Mustafa can backstab him with attack trolls, I mean, do you think that losing the fortress would make him lose the game? You see his money? He has 15,000 resources. He has literally I enough money to rebuild the, the fortress three times, bro. <laughs> The whirlwind is being used. The fortress has been taken down for a second time. But this time Mordor has again 5,000. <laughs> he's gonna rebuild it again. No. Yeah, he's gonna rebuild it again. Where? Let me check where. He's gonna rebuild <laughs> This is so funny. Okay, so finally. Finally, he's making a move slowly but surely. Don't let it come up. Don't let it come up. He has flood anyway very soon. Yeah, the flood should be able to finish it anyway. That, that might be the final move now. Use flood and finish the game. There is a Varikid. The only production building is now the Haradrim Palace level 3. So all you gotta do is kill the Haradrim Palace level 3 and kill this fortress and you are victorious. He has no more orc pits, no more siege works. He's gonna use flood around this area. The fortress won't make it up. Mustafa knows it's done and he's gonna leave the game and it's gonna be a 3-0 victory for Sauron from Canada against Mustafa from Turkey. But keep in mind, 